Hello, welcome. Thanks so much for coming. Um, we're going to get started in about six minutes. Just want to make sure that everybody that signed up has a chance to join. Quite a few signups for this one. In the meantime, let me get that slides link for y'all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Through the link to, link to the chat. Connected my uh, accident. accident. Ah, keep jiggling it, and it's okay. There we go. Uh, Les, this will be recorded. Um, I'll be putting it up on YouTube on the Hello Paper Space YouTube channel. So don't worry if you need to step out. We usually get, um, you know, quite a bunch, quite a few people in your position. You know, doing this at lunchtime is, or dinner time for some folks, or 2 a.m. for others. To those of you who are here past midnight, thank you. Appreciate you. Speaking of, I would love to know where everybody is calling in from. I'm in Austin, Texas, and because I'm an American, I didn't list the country. <laughs> I said the state, which is silly, but uh, would love to know where everybody's calling in from. BC, Poland, Ann Arbor, Copenhagen, Miami, Quebec, Bloomington, San Francisco, wow, Miami, Croatia, London, Kathmandu, Tashkent, Germany, Seattle, Manu, another Ann Arbor, Madrid, Bari, like literally from Mount Everest. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Mm, excuse me. Yeah, allergies are not fantastic here in Austin. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Buenos Aires, Pakistan, New Orleans. I'm going to New Orleans next month. Uh, Shita, India, and Marburg, Vancouver. If you're just joining us, um, I'm just having everybody throw in where they're calling in from the chat. You don't have to if you don't want to. I just think it's fun. Uh, I'm going to put the link to the slides in the the chat right now. So if you have any need to access uh, those, we we'll start there. I'll, I'll be periodically reposting it just in case. But you know, if we're in the middle of a presentation, and uh, it sounds like somebody really wants the slides in the chat, and I'm missing it, uh, please feel free to send it for me. I would appreciate it. Uh, let's give it another three minutes, we're still filling up. Okay, and I also see we got some LA, Houston, DC, Poland, Finland. Nice. Oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> es de Mexico. Or I guess I'd say hecho en Mexico. <laughs> you know, Mohammed says he's in Mars, and uh, hey, <laughs> que onda, Roberto? Uh, I don't believe you're on Mars. Dame dos años que practicar más mi español y pues voy a... Oh my gosh, como se dice? Uh, enseñar las uh, clases en español de Python. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, one more minute. I uh, got somebody from Kenya. Cool. Berlin. <laughs> New York. That's where paper space is. <laughs> Roberto, I'm in Texas, man. I got to speak Spanish. It's the second language here. Oh, plus, I love Oaxaca. Yeah, solid point, Lucas. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give it 40 more seconds, then we'll get started. If you're just joining us, here is the link to the slides. Get everything set up on my end in the meantime. Um, I'm not sure if you have a built in integration in your own, you may be able to do live captions, but I, I haven't implemented anything like that. Sorry. Uh, afterwards, the YouTube version of this will be uploaded. Um, I'm pretty, I could auto caption it if that is requested. Hey, Roshna. Um, if people want me to start auto captioning these, I built a uh automatic translated captioning application a while back and i could run these videos through that if y'all want if you're interested in automatic dubbing and translation check out uh whisper auto caption pretty proud of that uh zoom account settings uh i'm so sorry i so i had technical difficulties and i'm not on my person i'm not on my work computer i'm on my personal and i can't change those settings on here um until i get my thing fixed so next time i will do that aco I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name. Um, oh, somebody from Surrey. Cool. Uh, I did uh, I did four years up in Scotland. Good times. Okay. Oh, uh, somebody raised their hand. I'm going to start after this, but Rudolph, if you want to throw in the chat what your question is, I can quickly answer it. But otherwise, we are going to get started. Um, one last time, sending that in. Just so everybody has the slides and the link. Ah, gotcha. Um, let's. Can I get um, some thumbs up in the chat, which uh, you can do with like a lowercase b or if it autocorrects you, it doesn't matter. A b or a d if you're able to see the window, the uh, presentation screen. Cool. Sounds like you can all see it. I'm assuming based on that, everybody can hear me right. So I think we're good to get going. Um, welcome everyone. I am James Skelton. I'm the technical evangelist for Paper Space. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to all of you about Llama, which is the latest and really the only one of importance uh, large language model for meta AI. Um, this is a really, really cool language model. I know that, um, if y'all are like me, the all the attention around uh, generative pre-trained transformers like ChatGPT um, has been really blowing up in the news lately. I mean, obviously the applications feel almost limitless. Um, and today I want to tell you about Llama because I think it's really an awesome alternative to that. Uh, it does need a little bit of work though. Before we go any further, just want to talk about paper space gradient really quick. Um, we're going to be hosting this presentation and demo on paper space gradient. It's a platform for building and scaling machine learning applications. So you can explore a new library or data set in the notebook. Uh, you can automate pre-processing training or testing with the workflow and bring your application to life with a deployment. Uh, I assume that all of you in here are already in there, uh, but I encourage you all to join our community of 500,000 users on gradient. If you don't already have an account, you will need an account to follow along with the presentation today. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to optimize this to work with the free GPUs. So if you are not 
on a paid account, you may not be able to run this code. Um, that being said, I will uh, be spinning up a version of it on here so you can just see what we are and I'll take requests for text to generate if, uh, if that sounds fun. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, GPT-4 is out. That's recent. <laughs> I saw that in the news that it was coming, but I, I hadn't, hadn't played with it or heard anything about it. Definitely gonna have to write about that soon. But today we're talking about Llama. So today uh, we're going to start our overview with a intro to large language models, just talking about what they are. Um, then we'll talk about how large language models generate text. Then we'll introduce Llama, talk about how it works, uh, discuss the Llama architecture and compare it to other large language models. Uh, I didn't abbreviate that, sorry. LLMs are large language models. Afterwards, we will talk about the demo um, and the three different methods I've put in here to synthesize text from Llama in the notebook, um, as well as some tips for writing prompts for inference with Llama. Uh, I'll go into some more detail later, but in, in short, Llama is uh, not optimized for instructions or uh, really to take in prompts. It's, it's completely unstructured with its current uh, tuning, I, I suppose you could say. So it takes a little work to get it to output uh, the kind of results that you probably want or are used to seeing from other large language models. That being said, I found these results to be comparable and uh, the researchers did too across their benchmark. So after we've discussed that, we will show how to set it up and then get into the demo. Um, cool, let's go on to the next slide. Oh, that, that's been finicky. All right, I think I'm on the correct one. Yeah, slide three or four. All right, so uh, let's talk about what large language models are. Um, I found this perfect quote that I just couldn't, couldn't get around, it was just too good. So we're gonna lead with that. A large language model or LLM is a deep learning algorithm that can recognize, summarize, translate, predict, and generate text and other content based on knowledge gained from massive data sets. Uh, so to put that in other words, these models are trained on a massive amount of language data, um, really information often, because uh, it's not so ordered as to be called data, in order to functionally learn to emulate uh, the many different facets of human natural speech. Um, the best of these models nowadays are pretty much all based on the transformers architecture. That's not uh, a hard rule, but it's a solid one. Uh, excuse me one moment. Um, sorry, these transformers based models are typically trained in a self supervised fashion or with some human assistance. Um, so when I say with some human assistance, I'm talking about uh, paradigms like reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF, which was the method used uh, during chat GPT's training and tuning to get it to sound so human like. Um, it's a really impressive. Uh, framework for optimizing an existing model. Um, and here I have an example GIF just kind of showing, you know, roughly what that is like. So we have some input sequence of tokens, uh, recite the first law of robotics. And then it goes through this model, this, uh, this black box GIF uh, diagram of GPT-3, and it predicts the tokens that would follow in a natural sentence. So, uh, Asimov's first rules of robotics. I think it's a, ro a robot may not injure or, or harm a human or something like that, or on purpose do it. I can't remember the exact quote. Uh, by the way, uh, I do want to say the slide here, the GIF and the GIF in the previous slide, um, these are all from a really wonderful article that details uh, how GPT-3 works with animations. Uh, I want to make sure that you all check that out uh, give them credit because it's it's fantastic. But uh, let's talk about how large language models generate text. I and mean, we talked about this a little bit a moment ago, but let's go into more detail. Um, so here's another example using a GIF from the same article that I have linked in this slide. And it shows how GPT-3, which is, as I said, very similar to Llama, 
uh, works to sequentially understand and subsequently predict and generate the tokens from a sample sentence. This uh, paradigm is often called next token prediction. Uh, e each of the input sentence words is converted into a uh, token representation by passing through these uh, transformer decoder layers. Um, the decoder outputs uh, one token at a time, and an output token becomes a subsequent input to the decoder for the next uh, sequential part of the statement. So after it outputs a token, it will use that as the input along with the previous context for the next token. So it's constantly building off of the existed predicted sequence. Uh, so this kind of processing is called autoregressive. Um, and it's pretty typical for generating sequential outputs, and it's not really specific to the transformer model. But it allows a model to, in this case, our transformer or llama model to generate an output sentence of different lengths than the input, which is really nice. Um, you can also modulate how much of the context it's paying attention to um, and do various things like that that will kind of modify how much attention the model is paying to different portions of the sequence or the original context itself. Um, since the LLM was trained on such a wide variety of language data, so long as the request uh, to the model remains within the scope of the training data, and it's a good model, then the model can reliably and accurately produce the desired results of some sentence with a near human accuracy and readability. Okay, before I introduce Lama, are there any questions? Beauty. All right, let's talk about Llama. So Llama was released on February 24th, uh, along with four levels of pre-trained models. Uh, so they have a 7 billion param model, 13 billion param model, 33 billion, or 30. It's actually kind of confusing. So in their, uh, in their own repo, they say 30 billion. In the paper, it says 33. Uh, just for the sake of not causing confusion, I'm going to use 33. Uh, oh. In the last slide, the 96, that's the number of decoder layers for that trend, that GPT demonstration. To find the source of the article, it should be a link attached to the GIF. So um, I, I don't know if I can exit this without disrupting the, uh, I'll show at the end, uh, Jens, remind me please, but you should be able to just click on the, the GIF in the slideshow and it will pr print out the link. Um, okay, continuing on with Lama. Uh, the models were trained on 1 to 1.4 trillion tokens each. Um, so the 7B and 13B had uh, around 1 trillion tokens, and the 65 billion and 33 billion were trained on 1.4 trillion. Um, the kind of goal of this project, and I think it's important to mention, was to show that it's possible to train state-of-the-art models using only publicly available data sets. So they don't ever, uh, in their words, resort to proprietary or inaccessible data sets. So, so often the case, I think, um, you know, we as uh, ML engineers and data scientists will run into the situation where, you know, there's some amazing new model on uh, papers with code or something like that, but the uh, the, the way to recreate it or the uh, pre-trained model itself just isn't released. So I, I think this is a really fantastic open source philosophy of both releasing the pre-trained models and showing how they did it. Um, so you can find a lot of details about the training data set within Llama. Um, uh, somebody asked LLM and Llama difference. I'm guessing that's what they mean. Uh, Large language models are the type of model that Llama is. Llama is a transformers-based large language model. It just stands for large language um, model meta AI or something like that. Um, it's a pretty simple name. Um, okay, I want to call attention to the graph here and we can just kind of see how the training loss differed across the four different varieties of the model. Um, uh, and you can see just kind of how the that effect um, 
the effect of the volume of tokens that they saw overall uh, ends up affecting the overall eventual training loss. And it stands to reason that even though there's kind of diminishing returns, as we can see, the difference between uh, 13 and 33 is about 7 and 13, 33 and, uh, excuse me. The difference between each of the subsequent levels in training loss, at least uh, you know, to the naked eye, appear pretty similar, if not be actually diminishing. So the difference between 65B and 33B uh, final training losses look to be smaller to me than the final training losses between uh, 13B and 7B. Um, so I assume that there will be an eventual, uh, you know, point of di completely diminished return. But uh, for now, it seems that adding more parameters would actually continue to improve the model. So this is not even the fully optimized version of what it could be. Um, pretty impressive stuff. So how does Llama work itself? We talked a little bit about GPT-3 and other transformers-based models. Let's talk about Llama itself. Excuse me. So like all members of this family, uh, Llama is a feed-forward autoregressive language model uh, that sequentially predicts a future word from a given context. Um, so it's it's really realistically, um, we'll look at the architecture in a second, but as far as the actual sequence token prediction for the output, it's almost identical to GPT-3. So uh, that that um, GIF is still relevant. There's just um, different amounts of transformers layers and so on. Uh, that has not been publicly released. We don't have an exact idea of what that is. We just have what information they have released to us about uh, the nature of those changes. So we'll, we'll talk about those when we get to the architecture in just a moment. Um, I want to call attention here to the types of data that Lama was trained on. So we talked about how it was all publicly available. This is pretty neat, uh, but at the same time, uh, the total, you know, training corpus was uh, looks like about four and a half terabytes of data. So it's not really feasible for anybody outside of you know a situation with sixty eight times a one hundreds um, to actually do this sort of training. But at the same time, it shows that we are uh, we are working towards that 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 final goal of everybody being able to quickly train their own uh, deep learning models. Um, so the vast majority of this data uh, came from Common Crawl, um, then C4 and GitHub, uh, Wikipedia, Books, Archive, and Stack Exchange. I, I, I encourage all of you to check out what each of these do. But in short, um, they give the model a pretty wide understanding of pretty solid variety of different sorts of tasks. So they tested the model um, and compared it with other state-of-the-art models for specifically common sense reasoning, trivia, um, which is you know just, I, I guess, knowledge-based question answering, um, reading comprehension, question answering, mathematical reasoning, code generation, and general domain knowledge tasks. So like, um, Uh, stuff, questions about like science and math and history and things like that. And, oh, you know, this is kind of out of order. Sorry. Let's skip, let's, we're going to skip one slide and go back to it. And they found that, you know, across the board, Llama does really well compared to other state of the art models like Palm or Lambda. Um, and it works even without any significant fine tuning. Um, I think they do say they do some brief tuning um, to each of the models to get them to better uh, fit to the task. I think it's just so they can handle the inputs better. Because like I said, it's it's kind of used to unstructured prompt inputting. Um, and they found that uh, it actually outperformed models like Palm or GPT-3 uh, for a lot of general tasks like trivia recognition and reading comprehension and uh, was consistently near state-of-the-art level uh, when compared for kind of more, more fine-tuned model requiring tasks. So like code generation and mathematical reasoning, it, it, it still performed admirably, but it was a little bit below the fine-tuned models. Um, I definitely invite you all to check out the paper. There's some really interesting uh, diagrams of all of those comparisons in there. 
Um, but I think from this, we can surmise that Lama seems to have an extremely wide knowledge base, which uh, kind of helps counter that less organized, organized prompting structure. Uh, in fact, somebody's already created a fine-tuned uh, version of Llama. They call it Alpaca. Um, so they've, they've got a web demo for the 7B parameter version. And they're, you know, I think they trained it for, I think in it, like cost-wise, it was less than $600. Um, and I think it's 5.54K entries in a JSON file for different commands to train. Um, they were able to get like really nice comparable to chat GPT results and on a model that is, oh gosh. Um, well, actually chat GPT only has 25 billion parameters if I remember correctly. So I guess it would be more like a fifth, but, um, or a fourth even, but still uh, that's significantly less parameters for a comparable result. Um, Yeah, so I got a question. Uh, I just noticed these two questions. Um, why were there spikes during training? That's a good one. Um, I really, I'm really not sure what the spikes during training were. I have to assume that um, just looking at how the spikes really only seem to happen in the latter two, maybe there was something in the additional uh, 400 billion tokens that were added for those two that is more volatile? I'm really not sure. Um, that's a good question though. And G Varghese, uh, so are we just throwing more and more data at these transformer architectures then eventually reaching Bayes error? Uh, I suppose in a nutshell, yeah. Um, as, a, as long as we have the compute to be able to handle it, and the time to let it run so it can get used to all of, you know, so it can see everything multiple times and figure out those patterns and the latent space and everything like that. Yeah, functionally, yes, we are just kind of throwing more data. Um, uh, Kirill asks, oh, that's a great point. So he said the, the spikes are due to the use of batches to train. Not all batches are alike. So the loss is different. For, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And they would definitely be using batches to train on such a massive 4.5 terabytes of data data set. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by using GitHub to train. You need a, you need a GPU or a, more likely a series of GPUs connected together uh, to train this. Um, before I move on, I just point out this, uh, these diagrams here, um, these are just, this is just one of the many diagrams they have in the paper. Um, I just liked how this showed the different spread across, um, these different tasks, uh, for comparing, uh, Llama and Chinchilla. So this, Chinchilla has a standardized score. This is their published score. And we, sh they, sh they're showing how, uh, over time or over, you know, as they're exposed to more and more tokens, how the llama models compare. Uh, and we can see that in most cases, even the 13 billion model is getting very close to performing to the peak performance of the chinchilla model. Um, oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm seeing this conversation in the chat and I wanna make sure that I'm answering this question. Um, did I say GitHub data? I, I apologize for the confusion. The data they trained on was not from GitHub. It was um, this data we were talking about here. Um, the common crawl, C4, all these. Um, I apologize for any confusion. Feel free to ask about it again in a bit. I, I don't want to uh, confuse anybody, but we do need to move on. I want to make sure that there's plenty of time for us to play around with the demo. Um, oh, there, I mean, there definitely will be, actually. There's only two slides left. Okay. Um, uh, so here are... 
Sorry, I keep reading the chat. I'm going to break away from the chat. I'm too ADD to not look at it. Um, so I'm going to return to that as soon as we get past these next two slides where I'm just going to talk about how we're going to use the demo today. Uh, and then afterwards, I will look at the chat. So in the demo I provided uh, in the notebook, which I will walk through for all of you, um, there's three different methods we can use to synthesize text. So the original Llama repo included a script called example.py. Um, I've modified it so that everybody can use it with whatever prompt they want uh, and to change the seed. So if you ever want to recreate it or get variations on an existing output, you can. Uh, previously, it was using a random seed. Or no, it was, it was manually setting the seed to 42. And it had a, a, you know, a series of example prompts, which were interesting, but I think it's less valuable than you know, being able to input what you wanted. Um, next, kind of building off of that modified example script, I created a Gradio application to provide a simple I, uh, UI to best make use of the model in browsers or to share with others um, as an API. And by extension, the Gradio app is uh, capable of being called Pythonically or with J JavaScript um, from anywhere you can access the internet with code. So that can be a really neat way to uh, share around this, you know, maybe use it to build different applications building off of that. Uh, the Gradio application, you know, functionally in that situation is just a fast API like wrapper. Um, so I think I've mentioned this a few times now, prompting Llama can be a bit tricky. Um, it is not, optimized or fine-tuned for instructions um, like text DaVinci 03 is um, or chat GPT but um, it doesn't mean that it can't be like uh, you can't input prompts and get some reasonable outputs from it it just needs a little bit of uh, a little bit of work with your input prompt kind of setting the context for the model itself so uh being considerate of this and entering in our prompts with enough tokens to give the model context for the task, we can put in something kind of like this result I have here. Um, so a dialogue where a user interacts with AI. This is setting this this first sentence sets it up, and then the second uh, and third lines kind of introduce the uh, initiative to the question. And then you could add on um, immediately afterwards something like user colon, and then your uh, oh. Thank you, Ian. I did not go back to the architecture slide. I'll go back to that right after this. Um, thank you. Yeah, this is, I shouldn't have jumped around. Apologies, everyone. I'll go back to the architecture slide in just a moment. Um, yeah, but putting this in that sort of context allows the uh, output to be better formatted by the model itself. So it, it can understand itself uh, better and it can understand the input better if you kind of give it this sort of lead on. Um, there's also different things we can do like implementing stopping protocols for certain tokens or using a sliding window to keep track of the changing context across the chat. Um, that's not implemented here, but there's some cool projects like uh, Llama Chat and Vanilla Llama that take advantage of ideas like that. And I'll, I'll show an example of that as well later. Um, okay. So I'm so sorry, I skipped over the Llama architecture slides. Um, just rewind your brains a little bit here. Um, this is a bit of a beefier slide. So let's get through it uh, best we can. Uh, the Llama architecture, as I've said a few times, is an autoregressive language model based on the transformers architecture. Uh, the model comes in the seven different sizes we talked about, 7 billion, 13 billion, 33 billion, and 65 billion. And uh, in addition to just that basic Transformers architecture, of which I've got an image from the original uh, Attention is All You Need paper um, on the left, uh, it's got a few kind of modernization tweaks that were pretty much all developed uh, from other existing uh uh, generative pre-trained model paradigms. So uh, the first of these uh, is pre-normalization pre from GPT-3. So in order to improve training stability, the authors altered the architecture of the model to normalize the input uh, of each transformer sub, uh, excuse me, to normalize the input of each transformer sublayer 
rather than normalizing the outputs. Uh, they use the RMS norm normalizing function, which gives the models uh, improvement for rescaling and variance property and implicit learning rate adaption, ab ab adaptation ability. Uh, the next one is, I'm never sure how to pronounce it, Swiglu, Swiglu, S-W-I-G-L-U, uh, activation function from POM. Um, so by replacing the rectified linear unit nonlinearity uh, with the Swiglu, Swiglu activation function, which was introduced by uh, Shazir et al. in 2020, uh, they were able to significantly improve the performance of the model, um, particularly during training. And they're using a two-thirds dimension, uh, two-thirds 4D dimension instead of 4D, like in Palm. Uh, next are the rotary embeddings from GPT Neo. Um, so rather than using the absolute positional embeddings uh, typically found with transformer models, they use rotary positional embeddings, which were introduced by Sue et al. in 2021 at each layer of the network. Um, and in the paper, they have a neat paper, uh, and they have a neat diagram kind of outlining what each of the different um, params, dimensions, number of heads, uh, number of laters, batch size, and number of total training tokens used for each model. I couldn't squeeze it in here without it looking kind of strange, but I'll uh, I'll try and pop over to the paper in a little bit while we are running through our examples because it is time now to pop into. Oh, sorry, actually a little bit more to read. Uh, additionally, um, during training, they use the Adam W optimizer with a cosine learning rate schedule, such that the final learning rate was equivalent to 10% of the maximal learning rate. And they further improve training efficiency by reducing the amount of activations that are recomputed during the backwards pass with checkpointing. And they use an, an efficient implementation of the causal multi-head attention mechanism to reduce memory usage and runtime, uh, which is courtesy of Xformers, if, if you're familiar with Xformers, it's a really neat uh, other Facebook project that has gone into maximizing the efficiency of Transformers-based models. Um, and like I said earlier, altogether, it works by taking in the input, you know, doing all of this work on it to figure out our Oh, connection with the output embedding to get some sort of output probabilities, which will then interpret into some sort of token. It's the same sort of uh, methodology. Uh, oh, thanks, Junis. Beat me to it. Okay. So now it is time to get started with uh, the demo. As I think I mentioned before, um, Yeah, yeah. Somebody else mentioned that ChatGPT four just got announced. Sorry, I um, I just noticed there's some questions. What are the units for the training loss? Let's see. Did they put units? Looks like they didn't put units. I can check the paper though. Um, I can check the paper later. I I, I promise I'll be looking through the paper because I want to show you all that that diagram as well before we before we finish. And Omar, I am going to be sharing this on YouTube. So I also try to email this to all of you, the recording of this session. So you should get it. Um, okay, so the demo. Uh, I do wanna say, I'm, I'm sorry, I tried to optimize it best I could, but I could not get this to run on an M4000 alone. So, Unfortunately, this will not be working on the free GPUs. Um, I'd say the best bet um, uh, machine, or probably the weakest machine that would work for this would be probably the RTX 5000 maybe. I think you're gonna need 16 gigabytes of RAM at least. Um, so I recommend at least the A4000. Um, but you should be fine. You should be able to work it with the P5000 even. Um, but uh, it, it's finicky. Um, we'll just have to, uh, we'll just have to uh, follow along with me for now. And if you, um, I'm sorry. 
uh, just you know keep paying attention to our uh, blog as well. I'm going to be working on this, trying to optimize it. There's some cool projects like uh, Vanilla Llama and Llama Chat, which I mentioned earlier, that are working really hard to get this running on some really tiny uh, machines. And I'm I'm hopeful that I will be able to get this running on everything. But as of now, no. So uh, if you already have an account, all you need to do is click on the link. And that will take you using our nifty little run on gradient thing here to the notebook page. And all you're going to need to do is hit start your machine and click on whichever machine you want or whatever team you're in. Um, probably private workspace unless you're working at a company. Um, I'll give everybody a couple minutes for that to spin up. It's like a minute. I'll give it a minute. It shouldn't take less, shouldn't take more than 45 seconds. Um, you can spin it up on the free GPU and try to get it to run, but I'll just give you a heads up. It, I couldn't, I couldn't make it work even when I set the batch size down to one and the seek link to uh six or 32. It's just, uh, just too much for it. Um, there uh, is actually a recording. Um, I think there's a recording for Whisper Auto Caption on YouTube. Check out the Hello Paper Space YouTube if you want to see uh, me talk about my auto dubbing application. Um, here. Uh, and... Oh, working on personal computers. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's our most starred one, so it's easy to find. <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, I'll try and auto caption this video for everybody. Um. Okay. So by now, I think everybody should be spun up. Um. I'm gonna go into my own version, which I have here. Uh. Unlike you all, I'm running on. Uh, it doesn't say. Uh. And in. A 180 gigabyte. So uh, this will be a bit faster on my end probably than yours, but should be comparable in the end. I just wanted to do this. All right, got a request to see under the hood. Oh no, I'm on RTX 4000. Cool. All right. This was actually when I was I was trying to uh, I was trying to get a benchmark going for the uh, RTX 4000 to see if we could run it on weaker machines. So that explains that. I got another example right here. Uh, this one is using Vanilla Llama. This one is running on uh, four times a six thousands. So that one will actually be legitimately super fast. Um, but in the interest, I'm not sure about what the specs of an A10 G are. Um, off the top of my head. Oh, uh oh, what's going on here? Uh, it appears I'm having a a wee bug on my machine, unfortunately. Um, so I can't change it right now. But that's fine. I've got this. Um, let me go here. All right. So. In inside the notebook, once it's spin up, spun up, um, you should be able to find a IPYMB file called llama.ipymb. Go ahead and open that up and run the first cell to install the requirements for this notebook. Um, this is just like fire, torch, a few things. It's 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 fast as you can see. Then from there, all we need to do, I I've got all these from other examples I was making. Um, so uh, all you need to do is scroll down to this next section for launch Gradio if you want to spin up the Gradio app and run that cell. Um, yours won't have all of this stuff. It does, it, it's not important. And then we can click to open. It's loading. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to reload this because I have not seen it have this issue before. Hmm. Sorry, everybody, some technical difficulties really quick. Let's see. Um, I'm just checking to see if it'll, yeah, okay. Uh, apparently, this is not, Gradio has a little bug here with browsers. Um, so it's actually not to do with that. Um, yeah, so it looks like it's not showing up with the, I, I'm in Safari right now on my personal computer, so that's the issue. Let me just change my screen to show. There we go. All right, can everybody see the app now? <laughs> Sorry about that. So keep in mind, if you're running this on Safari on a Mac, um, it may uh, it may not work. So unexpected token. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what could be causing that. And I'm getting an error. All right, technical difficulties are had. One moment, everybody. I'm just gonna spin up a new version because I'm not sure what's going on. Fortunately, it takes less than a minute to spin up. <laughs> oh, don't you love it when things are working all morning? Uh, just a bit, everybody. I'm seem to be having some issues. I think I think Gradient itself may be actually having an issue right now. Uh, let's see. Oh. Okay. I'm going to spin up a new version. Hopefully this will stop being strange. I think the reason the other one wasn't working is because I've actually got it set to be uh, running on a different version. And the reason it's broken is because my own experimentation, I was uh, changing around some of the code. So basically it was trying to, uh, I had uncharted, these models are currently kept in a form where they are, you know, consolidated.00.pth, consolidated.01.pth. Um, I had, combined them in that second notebook uh, for a different project. So I think that is why it was confused. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Should be up and running now. Let me share my screen again. Let's see. Oh, right. The whole not working in this. Oh, okay. Um, stop share. Change share to 
I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to radio, let them know that that's happening. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to times two. So I'm going to try the 13B really quick. All right. It's working. Um, so it has to actually initialize and load the model. So sometimes the first run will take like 45 seconds, regardless of the size, but afterwards it gets down to like 20 seconds, um, which is nice. Um, got another request to run NVIDIA SMI. Um, I'll do that on this other computer while this is loading. My computer is screaming. Uh, yeah, it's not, not playing well. I also have an older version of Safari. I haven't used this computer in a while, so I think that may be part of the issue and the reason this was all happening. Aha, here we go. Finally got it to all, it's all running. <laughs> so this was using the 13 billion parameter model. Um, so my new invention is a human bicycle. It can run you up a steep incline or down a mountain, depending on which way you're facing. And it's very friendly. Please feel free to use this invention, blah, 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 blah. Um, so if we remember from what I was saying earlier, it's, uh, it's a bit finicky uh, about how you're going to actually put in prompts. So let's try something like this. Um, what should I ask it? Anybody got a request? Going once. Aha. Last three digits of pi. <laughs> this will be interesting. All right, that should be loading now. Um, while this loads, I'll just briefly, oh, okay, we can see here. Uh, looks like the AI doesn't know the definition of pi. <laughs> and then the, the AI recreating us gets confused that we somehow don't know what pi is because the AI's recreation of us knows what it is. And so it's it's synthesizing a pretty realistic conversation, but I wouldn't say it sounds like one between an AI and a user. Um, uh, Junis, um, so currently, uh, all of the models have different requirements to run. The 7B can only be run on a one or more GPU machine with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. I think the smallest or the weakest GPU model we have at Paperspace that would run it would be either an RTX 5000 or a P5000. Um, after that, uh, in the official implementation of the models, the way they are uh, layered and sharded basically requires that you use multi-GPU for the 13B, um, 30B and 65B models. Uh, they literally correspond to uh, two consolidated checkpoints, four consolidated checkpoints, and eight consolidated checkpoints for two, four, and eight nodes for your multi-GPU system. So it's, uh, it's a little finicky, as I was saying. Uh, I definitely recommend Vanilla Llama, which I will show at the end of this presentation. It's an alternate implementation of this I discovered last night that, uh, Simplifies a lot of this, um, but you won't be able to use the free mod the free storage of the models uh, on the public data sets uh, in its current form with that. So keep in mind, you're going to need to pay for some significant storage uh, if you want to use the 65 gig model on a notebook. Um, but you can, I got it to run on uh, two times A100. So even though it claims to require needing eight GPUs, I, I got it to generate in about two minutes with two A100s. Um, yeah, to my knowledge, um, there the official implementation was released about as bare bones as possible. So uh, no deep speed, no colossal AI. Um, you can at least get it to run multi-GPU with Torch Run, but... Um, 
I think a lot of people are working on that. Um, for the one I was just talking about, um, Vanilla Llama, that I think they use Accelerate to um, to accel to accelerate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it works pretty well. Um, I want to point out here, you have to actually set the API name when you are calling this to get the API root, but it's possible to set it. So um, you can just click on this, the view API page. All you got to do is at the end of uh, the uh, app.py function there or app.py script, there will be a button.click thing. All you need to do is put in an API name there. Um, uh, I usually default to run or test. Um, and then from that, you can uh, directly query your new application from anywhere that has internet. So this can be really nice if you actually want to deploy the application from uh, from a gradient notebook and then you know call it wherever you need it. So you know you can use it even chatbots or uh, Discord situations, things like that. Um, pretty versatile. Um, and it uses fast API, I think, under the hood, which is kind of, you know, the uh, the gold standard right now in um, API optimization for um, Pythonic deployments. Okay, so um, I have to unshare my screen again, go back to the other window. Okay, should all be in the right place now. Um, I wanted to show um, it died. Is this no, this is not it. Wanted to show the llama. So let's um whichever one of these isn't running. Aha. Okay, so vanilla llama. Basically, what this the way this works is it uh, unshards the models into a single uh, uh, model file and says 131 gigabytes for the 65 billion. Um, quickly make sure I have everything set up correctly. Uh, oh, it's okay. Yeah, so it's still got the same here. So here I've got a sample I made uh, using the 65 billion model. Um, I asked it to write the first paragraph of the first chapter of The Winds of Winter by George R. R. Martin. Sadly, I think it does okay, but it starts to get a bit repetitive. Um, haven't figured out the perfect way to do that, but I, I definitely recommend everybody check out um, Vanilla Llama. It is a super great way to um, kind of speed up the way everything is working with uh, with llama under the hood and i've got it uh linked in the last slide i think nope i'll add it in though um and you should be able it, it it's very straightforward um all you need to do is uh convert the model files that we already have for you in the public data set uh by the way i didn't i apologize i didn't reference that uh some of you may be wondering where the model data is coming from I've actually put everything into a public uh, repo for you, and it's automatically mounted to any notebook that is um, uh, based on that the GitHub repo from Gradient AI slash Llama. So we can do um, oh, let's... I think that's it. Yeah. As you can see, it's got 13 billion parameter, 30 billion parameter, 65 billion parameter, 7 billion parameter and the tokenizer model and checklist. Uh, currently, the 65 billion actually had an upload error. So it's actually missing two of its consolidated. So uh, only seven through 30 are currently working. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be actively working on this because I'm trying to create a more uh, functional um, fine tuning paradigm than something like Llama Chat, which I wasn't super happy with. Um, so look out for more research from us on adapting and fine tuning uh, Llama. And last thing I wanna leave y'all with, is uh, 
Oh, come on. Where is it? They have a Gradio app for this, and I want to show you all it because it's uh, it's very impressive. Oh, skipped it. And of course, this is running on, oh, right. The whole Safari thing isn't working. Um, one moment. Uh, okay, just saw your question, Iqbal. Um, interesting. I'm. Let me just make sure I am going to answer your question right. Yeah, I assume domain adaptation would be possible, but um, I haven't seen any sort of implementation for it yet since this is so bleeding edge, but I, I don't see why it wouldn't be possible. Um, yeah, I am actually at the end of the session now, and I know I see that we're like right at time. Um, I think they actually have the 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 code for the application in there. Let me see. I'm just looking through the repo right now. Yeah, I assume that upvote and downvote thing is essentially doing RHLF, which is cool. Um, but this will only continue to get better. But that's the end of the session. Um, everybody, just a reminder, I'll be emailing out uh, the recording. Um, give me a few days. I'm, I like to cut through it and make edits and things like that and maybe add in some visuals here and there but um you will hear from me with a recording of this i definitely encourage you all to uh keep playing around with llama um remember that the uh the version that i show uh in let me just actually get that link i'm realizing now so the version we used today can be found in the link I just put in the slide. So gradient AI slash llama. Um, and if you wanted to just spin this up and you lose access to the slides or something, there's a run on gradient link in there. Um, definitely, uh, definitely keep playing around with this. You know, um, we have some, we have, we, we definitely have enough power to do some fine tuning. So I'm going to be doing some experimenting. Um, trying to get something like that text DaVinci 003 uh, result that the Stanford Labs folks got. Um, if we do get all that working, you know, look out for uh, public implementations to be released from us. Um, um, yeah, just, okay, let me, I got somebody reiterating the question about uh, Whisper auto caption. Let me just pull that up. Maybe I didn't post that one. Small chance. Huh, yeah, okay. I'll hold another one about Whisper. It seems like that's pretty popular. Um, but uh, the Gradio, I think the, I, it's not a Gradio app actually, it's like a fast, it's like a Flask application I made for it. Um, the Flask application is pretty simplistic. You know, you just upload video, it runs, overlays captions, uh, displays video for download deletes underlying files. Pretty straightforward. Um, before I go, um, does anybody want me to um, like run some prompts through the 65B or do anything like that? Um, 
otherwise we're done with the session. If you have any requests for things to go through, I will, uh, I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks, John. Thank you all for coming. Oh, and uh, look out for another presentation in like two weeks from me. I'll be talking again sooner than last time by 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 pretty significant margin. Yeah, thank you so much. Get it. I'm gonna stay on for one more minute just in case something comes up. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> I'll ask who am I really quick. That's going to be the last one, though. Um. Okay, two requests. Um, uh, I like I like what's the meaning of life better. <laughs> so I'm gonna run that. Um, do I have a link about making prompts? I don't exactly have one, but I have uh, kind of do. Let me let me pull that up. Um, I just found I found an issue. Um, so, uh, Oleg, this is a good place to start. Um, because their their llama chat is just llama. They've just edited it. Um. Yeah, that's really that's um that's where I've been basing most of mine on. I've gotten better um better results following that. Um going back to here. So what is the meaning of life? You are here for a purpose, and this is to enjoy your life the best you can and to help others to do the same. If you can do this, you are a winner of life. And then it goes on to argue with itself. Um, you know, Lama, I was trained only on open data sets. Any thoughts on what might be required to create comparable models without the same license restrictions? Um, commercial use. I was under the impression that Lama was released under GNU 3.0. So you were able to distribute and modify it as you please. Um, Uh, Verdran, um, if you check the link I most recently sent, that llama chat, I'll just put it back in. That that repo has some information about how to train it. All right. Um, I need to go now, everybody. Uh, thank you again so much for your time. This is a great session. Really appreciate all of the interest and attention. That was poorly worded. Uh, everybody paying attention uh, so well and asking such great questions. Um, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day or evening.